Our first guest manages the First Eagle Global Fund, one of the top performing global equities funds, according to Bloomberg data, and that makes him a Bloomberg best as well. Abe Despande joins us now. He says he is currently finding the most buying opportunities in the U.S. and Japanese equities. Uh, and just because you're at First Eagle and, uh, you know, with Jean-Marie and everything, gold is the first thing that pops into my mind when I think of you guys. I woke up this morning and thought, is it a good time to buy gold at $1,300? Is this maybe a leading indicator of things to come or... Is it maybe a time to get out? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, gold, it's a topical uh, thing. I mean, everyone's talking about it. Flows are picking up into gold mutual funds. Uh, probably the only thing more exciting than gold these days is the U.S. stock market. And I mean, I mean who needs a movie when you've got a reality <laughs> show like this, right? Uh, gold for us has been a feature of our investment appro uh, uh, portfolio for, for decades. And it will remain that, right? I mean, you guys are always going to keep a pretty healthy portion of gold. My own feeling is as long as uh, the policy is one towards debasement, currency debasement, that there's no reason to not have gold. So uh, at some point in the future, uh, you know, the central banks will gain their credibility and will have less need for that gold. But, but do you fluctuate, I mean, in percentage terms, how much you hold? Do you sometimes look at it and think this is cheap right now or uh, we should sell off a little bit? And where do you think we are right now? I mean, $1,300, record high? $1,300 is a record high. Um, clearly four or five times above where it was just a few years, uh, seven, eight years ago. We have a gold fund, a First Eagle Gold Fund, which I co manage with Rachel Benepe, which is annualized 25% a year for 10 years. And I look wow. at that, it's, it's a wow kind of thing, but I look at it and go, that can't go on forever, right? Um, but Can it, though? Well, it can't go on forever. Mathematically, it would represent, it would be as large as the U.S. Right. GDP in, you know, 50 years or whatever. Uh, so I think there's, at some point, there will be an end, but like I said, to me, the reason to own gold, it's, it, 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 it makes a lot of sense. The government policies are one towards government debase, uh, currency debasement, and that's not even just in the U.S., but right. around the world. So, But, I mean, we're up, I think, what is it, the 10th year in a row or something like that on gold. I mean, that trend, that's a pretty strong trend line. You expect that strong trend line to continue over the next five to ten years? Uh, in fact, we have no expectation. Uh, when we invest in gold, it's just a, it's a matter of do we find more value in, in the gold stocks or do we find the v value more in the gold bullion? And we balance in the gold fund, we balance between the two. And we have always had exposure to gold uh, under current uh, with Jean-Marie or with us uh, right. somehow or another. In 1981, we bought Newmont Mining. We still own Newmont Mining. So I, I'd, I'd imagine it would be a feature of the funds for, for some time to come, but we have no, no real price target or, or value target. Yeah. All right. So you like gold, and obviously that's, that's a portion of your portfolio, but you're also, you own a fair amount of U.S. stocks. Does that mean you're bullish on the U.S. stock market at this point? You know, it's an old saw. It's not a stock market, but a market of stocks, mm -hmm. and it's a cliche. Uh, but for us, it's true. I mean, it's, it's, it's evident in the United States. It's most evident perhaps in Japan where uh, there are many, many people who would just not invest in that market because of the demographic situation. But we're, we're able, because of that, 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 you know, people just ignoring the entire market, we're able to pick up really good, high-quality businesses. And the United States, too, I mean, the, the holding period for a stock is something like seven or eight months. There's, it's a very, very short-term focus in the stock market in the mm -hmm. U.S., and we're long-term investors, and we can take advantage of that very short-term outlook and invest in businesses where we think that earnings power, the duration of the business is, is you know, multi-year, multi-decade. And we have a, we've been able to found, find a few things. I mean, clearly, uh, you're famous value investors, but how do you avoid getting stuck in a value trap? I mean, how do you avoid getting in so far, uh, way too early, and then just holding a stagnant dog uh, for years and years? Of course, that happens to, to all of us. Um, what we, what we, although I'll say there's no such thing as a value trap, there's only analytical errors. Usually a value trap is a stock that has gone down merely to match the decline in the intrinsic value. And if we had purchased that stock, uh, misunderstanding the, the viability of the business, that's really our fault. Not, we can't blame it on anyone else. So, and we've had on occasion situations like that, that, but I'm happy to say it's few and far between. Uh, let's talk about just, I, I know you want to get away from naming individual stocks, but what, uh, where do you find the most value? I mean, do you see it in certain industries? Do you see it in, is, are there more values in Japan than, than the U.S.? Are there more values in the U.S. than Europe? I'd, I'd say I can answer why, where we don't find the values. We don't find the values investing directly in emerging markets. Uh, we believe even though the Chinese markets are down 20 percent, they're still not cheap. Uh, many um, Hong Kong listed companies have direct exposure to the uh, property and real estate uh, uh, or uh, infrastructure bubble that's, that we see is in, in China. So we don't want that exposure. 
many countries themselves, such as India and, and, and others, are, are, are benefiting from a, uh, a credit uh, boom, uh, not quite to the par on par what we had over here, but still. And it's elevated the stock prices, economic activity, and, and earnings basis. So we're sort of staying away from those areas. All right. Hey, Abe, thanks so much for joining us. Abe Despande, uh, First Eagle Global Fund, the overseas fund, I think, top 3% uh, over the past five years and in the top 8% this year to date. We appreciate you joining, joining okay, us. Thank you.